Hey everyone, welcome back to another Game Maker tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the four main components of a basic game. These are rooms, backgrounds, sprites, and objects. Firstly, let's dive into sprites. A sprite is an image or of an object. Without sprites, we would be unable to see the objects. So let's right click on the sprites folder here and click create sprite. So uh, in Game Maker, we have a prefix system. So depending on the component of the game, we would have different prefixes. For example, if it's a sprite, we'll use S or SPR. Now, for example, if this sprite is called a square, we'll use S square. All right. If it was an object, we'll use O or OBJ square. If it was a room, we'll, we'll say RM. Or if it was a background, we'll use BG. As this is a sprite, we'll call it S. Now let's click Edit Sprite, and this will bring up Game Maker's inbuilt sprite editor. Let's click New, and leave the width and the height 32. Now let's double click on Image 0, and let's simply just color this, let's say, a uh, simple blue. And we'll fill that in right there. Now, sprites can sometimes be made up of multiple images, such as a walk cycle of a player or an attack animation of an enemy. When running the game, the sprite will cycle through these sub-images to create an animation. Now, we don't have time to do this, so we're just going to add another image and just make that a different color, like green. Click tick, and you can click show preview if you want to see how this looks like. To that again, and we'll leave all the settings default for now. And click OK. Okay, so now we have an image of an object. However, we don't have any objects at the moment. So let's create an object right now. Now, objects are central to the programming architecture of a Game Maker game. These objects in Game Maker interpret all of the events and run them all the majority of the code. So let's right click on this objects folder and click create object. As I said before, the prefix for objects is O or obj. I'm just going to use o for now and call this square. Now objects contain various events that happen at different times which trigger actions programmed by you. However for now we won't put any events or actions just for um, this tutorial but for the next tutorial we will. So this right let's choose s square and we'll leave all the settings default. Click OK. Right, now for the next, uh, we need to put these objects in a container somewhere, you know, where it can interact with the player. Now these containers are called rooms. Now rooms can contain the levels of your game. Each room can be filled with obstacles, enemies, buttons, platforms for interacting with the player. It can also be used to create menus, stat screens, and inventory screens. So right click on the rooms and click create room. Now let's name this RM, which is the prefix, and level 1, just for now, even though it's not really a game. The width, 640 by 480, is generally the default size for my games. And the speed is basically the frames per second, FPS, and we'll just leave that at 30, um, just for now. Now let's switch over to objects. Uh, click on this button right here, and we'll add in O square. So let's put that object right in the center right here. Now there's some other settings like tiles, physics, but for now, just ignore them. We'll cover them in future tutorials. Let's go to the uh, background section. Now here is where we apply our backgrounds. So before we get into this, let's actually create one. Now a background is basically an image. It's kind of like a sprite, but instead of associating with the object, it associates with the room. So let's right click on the background folder and click create background. We'll call this BG, which is the prefix, clouds. Let's edit background, make a new one, and the width 640 by 480, and this is in fact the room size. Click OK. Now I'm going to make the background blue, a bit of a lighter blue, and of course we need clouds. So, 
and then we just kind of draw them out. This is obviously going to look really bad, but it's just for demonstrating purposes, I guess. Let's get rid of that. Click uh, the tick button to save that. And click OK. Now let's also make um, some mountains. Now you may be wondering, can we have two backgrounds on one room? I'll show you how we can do this. Edit background. New. And once again, 640 by 480. Now we're going to use the Game Maker's layer um, backgrounds. So we're going to use the line tool. And create triangles as if it's a mountain. Like so. Now there's one thing that's pretty important here, and is that you want to have these outside parts to be transparent. Now this is because this is where the clouds are gonna be. Let's kinda of add this to it. And fill that in. Click the tick button to save that and click OK. Obviously once again it looks terrible, but just for demonstration purposes. So click on background zero and this is the lowest layer of your background. Click click this button here and click BG Clouds. So you can see it, it, it's immediately applied onto the room. Go background one. This is your second layer. I call that BG Mountains. And boom. Um, something very common in games is that clouds sometimes moves. So let's go to background zero here. Go horizontal speed. And we'll just make that one. So it moves at a speed of one. We'll compile that. Let's see how this game runs. So as you can see, the game looks pretty good. We've got a 640 by 480 room. We've got mountains. We've got the clouds that are moving. And we've got an object in the center with flashing objects that created that animation. So yeah, these four uh, main components of Game Maker is in one game. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something for it. Stay tuned for the next Game Maker tutorials. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.